Well, hello and welcome back to Master Horn Investing. This is Brian Horn. Today we're going to be talking about Tesla. So a little bit of information on me if you hadn't seen it from before. So Tesla is like way overbought. So we're going to talk about selling the stock and buying puts. So Tesla is one of the leading developers and manufacturers of electric vehicles, as you know. It's involved in the design and research and development and manufacture of EVs, as well as other things such as solar panels and energy storage systems and so forth. But according to Jim Rickards with uh, Paradigm Press, Tesla also offers these vehicle services that are branded, this branded retail merchandise, vehicle insurance, you know, they, uh, they cover the loans on your car and collect the money, so forth, and they got, and they got these main competitors here. So the current capitalization is $600 billion on Tesla, which is more than like what? The other eight or ten next leading uh, motor vehicles or something combined, uh, you know, in terms of price and so forth. Well, Tesla makes batteries and so forth, but here's the, here's the problem. They're in a long-term decline. So the first hurdle they have is this battery problem. So they have a lot of this cobalt, nickel, copper, and so forth. And despite all the efficiencies in manufacturer batteries, there have been no major technological breakthroughs for batteries in over 100 years and like how they work and how long they last and things like that. So they've always been a, a constraint for the, for the EVs. So in 1905, 90% of the New York taxis were battery powered. So EVs aren't exactly like something brand new that came around. In the 1950s, 100% of the German postal system used battery powered trucks to deliver their things. Golf carts are EVs essentially, right? So there's nothing really new here about Tesla and so forth. It's just that they kind of made a cool car that looked nice and could be kind of fast and recorded things like what's going on around the car and it can make little light shows and stuff. But all those chemicals and metals, they all need, are needed to make batteries and they're in short supply. So first of all, we've got a supply problem, especially in lithium. So lithium might be a good investment because it's in high demand, short supply, you could look at lithium miners if you wanted to have a, if you wanted to make a better investment than just buying like Tesla or something. But they, they to mine this stuff, it, it incurs a huge amount of diesel fuel and electricity and heavy equipment and there's waste and disposal of the ore and unwanted products and things. And so this, that, that's a very consuming process. And even assuming that all these chemicals and everything, if all those hurdles could be overcome, which is an unlikely assumption, the U.S. power grid is not even close to be able to handle all these EV fleets and cars and, and diesel trucks and everything that are supposed to be on the market, according to the Green News scam of Biden administration. So simply put, batteries don't work on a scale for transportation yet. So we can't scale these things where everybody can buy a car. Even though all the car companies said, you know, by 2030, 2032, 2035, we're going to be 100% EV. Well, that's an assumption that people want to have as a goal, but it, currently it's not possible. Okay, so it's been known for more than a century and nothing's changed, but Tesla, Tesla's greatest technological breakthroughs may be its own autopilot software and camera sensing technology, but that can still be used on an internal combustion engine. It doesn't have to be used on an EV. So just because it has this breakthrough doesn't mean it can't sell it and be used on all these other cars. So the one year high for the stock on Tesla was 382. That's after all the stock splits. Remember it got up to like 2000 something and had a five for one split and stuff. And I think it split again, two for one or something. So in, in April of 2022, it hit 382. That was due because oil prices were skyrocketing. Gas prices are all time high. Everybody's thinking, okay, I've got to have an EV or I'm not gonna be able to afford to go to work. So the stock price, also got a boost around that time because in China, it was emerging from this extreme COVID lockdown. And there was hope that reopening China might lead to this uh, output from the, test, uh, from the Tesla factory in Shanghai and be able to increase sell to Chinese customers. Well, based on these Chinese economic realities, you got declining gas prices. You've got Elon Musk selling all, a lot of his stock, you know, covered Twitter and some of these kind of things. Tesla fell to 108 bucks a share just last month on January 3rd. Then, so that was down 71% from this April high. Since then, Tesla's bounced back, you know, just in the last, you know, what, four weeks. It went from that 108, it's bounced back up to 194 today. So it's up in the 190s. That's like a, that's almost a hundred, that's almost a double. I mean, like, you know, not, not 190, it's like 76%. But if it got to 216, I mean, it can, it can move around fast. That'd be a double from that low. 
So you know, let's look at this Tesla chart. So if you look at a Tesla chart, this is the two-year chart. You can see this little black line right here that kind of comes across, goes that way. The That was a major support when it came down here, hit, bounced up again, kind of hit, bounce, came through, and then it became a resistance. Boom, it hit that resistance line, came down, and wham, it's hit it again. So we are right at that line on this two-year chart. Let's look at the three-month chart. You can kind of see it pretty well here. Look at this resistance. Boom, boom, boom. And then again right now. So we are at a major resistance on this stock. Okay, so the fundamentals remain negative on the stock despite any the solid rally and everything that we've had. The US, first of all, you got the U.S. economy clearly in a recession. Um, and it, we, know we haven't acknowledged that, I guess, as an official level. But these early buyers of EVs have been kind of angered by the price cuts of these new Teslas because they were promised that the prices would stay high. Their trade-ins would stay high in value and so forth. Well, so they're kind of upset about this. China was also uh, disappointed. Then you have these recent trends to the rapid de deteriorating earnings picture of Tesla. So Tesla cut these prices in late 2022 and early 23. That reveals a demand problem. You don't cut prices if you have sufficient demand. If demand is high, you leave the prices up. That's just kind of supply and demand economics. So these price cuts now, uh, they've attracted a few marginal buyers. I said, okay, I wasn't gonna buy a Tesla, but now that it's dropped, you know, 10 grand, I think I'll buy one. Okay, so it might have pulled a few people off the fence, but here's the problem. Price cuts come with a big cost. And so it kind of, kind of tarnishes your image as a luxury brand because now you're dropping your price along with everybody else. So you're kind of seen more as one of the boys. Car Gurus says the price of used Tesla Model 3 has gone down 26% in the last year. That's on the used cars. So, so much for the notion that, you know, the Model 3s, uh, price would actually rise on the resale value because they could be used for robo taxis and things. So here's the here's the price chart. So you look at this price decline that's going on over here, huge declines, so forth. And you see like the average price the last 30 days down almost 10% on a Model 3. Last 90 days, 19% on a Model 3. Year over year down 26 on the Model 3. And that was uh that's as of today. I just took that screenshot today. So the mo this is the most overvalued stock in, in history. This is more overvalued than some of these other stocks like he had like you know, back in the dot-com boom. So Jim Rickards and Dan Moss, they run Paradigm Press. They look at stocks and they give them what they call a bubble score between 100 and 1. And so by overvalued, they look at the uh, market capitalization or the market cap of the stocks. It's like $600 million in market cap. And then you say, what's a reasonable estimate based on sales, current price trends, uh, and so forth? And then they rank these stocks. So Tesla's real, real, real word, I'm kind of getting a tongue tied right here, real, real world, geez, impact in terms of the actual revenue and the, and the auto, uh, of the auto market share. It's just a tiny rounding error relative to the whole impact of the stock market. I mean, it's nothing. So Tesla's, it's a huge stock price, but it's really not worth very much with its revenues. So that's facing a lot of headwind, headwinds right now. So first of all, you know, uh, you have to hit, consider this, the history of the Model S and the Model X. We were promised to achieve profitability and that didn't happen. Uh, it still hasn't happened. Tesla's accounting games. Now, you remember Enron kind of floating around in all the accounting games they were paying, with change, changing the depreciation and putting things over depreciation schedules over a huge period of times and using this off balance sheet accounting and so forth. Okay, there, Tesla's got some similar stuff going on here. Plus, they got you got higher car loan rates now, and so it makes it harder to buy a more expensive car. Then you have, who was buying the Teslas? Well, there are a lot of the tech employees, real estate agents that were kind of like making money and wanted to look kind of like they were uh, at the high end, so they wanted to drive a Tesla. Mortgage loan officers that were making bank with all the mortgage loans, stock brokers. Okay, well, the Tesla, that customer segment is like on a big decline right now. First of all, people's portfolios are down. And when you have less money in your portfolio, you feel less rich. So therefore, you tend to not buy as many luxury items or buy zero. Real estate's down. So real estate agents aren't getting as much money. They're less likely to be buying these kind of things. 
lending slowing. So those lending people are you know, not going to be buying. And then all the people in the tech industry, there's all these layoffs going on. If you read all the tech industries, everybody's laying off Facebook, Google, Twitter, Apple, I mean, Amazon, they're across the board. All the tech guys are getting laid off. So all these tech people that wanted to rock, you know, drive and kind of show off to their friends and buddies at work, and I drive a Tesla. Okay, that's all kind of making everybody nervous now with all these laughs going on. People are less likely to buy a Tesla. I mean, just face it. So employees will not have the money to throw around on luxury vehicles. So the consensus estimate from for 2023 used to be $5.35 just in last October. Now it's $3.39. That's a huge decline in estimates. So we were not, I mean, that, and that's going to continue to decline. And as the estimates continue to decline, so the stock price. So in the bubble score, Tesla has a bubble score of one. Bubble scores only go from 100 to one. 100 being the best, a one being the absolute worst in the, on the market. So if you take all stocks on the stock market, like the S&P 500, the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ not 100, the Russell 2000, and you give them a bubble score. A bubble means like how much of a stock bubble are we in? How much bloating is there in there? What's, what's likely this bubble is going to burst? Uh, according to uh, Paradigm Press, when they rank this thing, it is ranked one. That is the lowest you can possibly get on any stock. So it has got the biggest bubble score of any stock. Now maybe there's some other ones out there as well, but there's not that many ones. Most of them are eight, 10, 30, 40, 75. <clears throat> so what you want to do excuse me, find a stock with a bubble score, you know, up there in the 80s and so forth. Or if you can find one that has 100, that means it's got, it's not in a bubble. It means it's got, uh, it's at the bottom. It's just time to buy that sucker. So uh, you got, you got a, uh, this low bubble score, which means it's very likely to burst. Now, if you look at what fund managers are doing, this is the big money. So what's the big money doing? If you follow the big money, not the retail investors, you can often tell where a stock's going because they're the ones that buy the huge blocks of shares and so forth. Okay, so how about American funds? American American funds, the Growth Fund of America. And how about uh, the New Perspective Fund? Combined, they sold 39 million shares in a single quarter. And that's just one, that's just two funds of one fund company. How about Oppenheimer funds? How about Vanguard funds? How about Fidelity funds? and all these other funds and pension funds, they're not done unloading the stock. So that they're selling huge amounts of stock. So the bottom line for Tesla is the price is gonna decline. So with about 3.16 uh, billion Tesla shares outstanding, which has grown because they've issued more shares, we got a huge supply and a diminishing demand. And we actually got selling going on on all these from the big, from the big boys, which means that just a year ago, just I mean, three years ago, there was only 2.7 billion shares. So we're, we're up another 10% in shares and we got a worsening situation, uh, you know, of what's going on here. So we got inflation of in Tesla shares. Uh, it's been kind of like this money supply is going out. So we have more money, money supply, more share supply in this case. It dilutes each share's value. So you got this dilution of the shares and um, if you look at options, call option activity has been huge in Tesla over the last month. That's usually a sign that things are going to reverse. So if you look at the put call ratio on Tesla, calls have been extremely high compared to puts. This is just an accident waiting to happen. Okay, so the demand for the short call, for the short term calls on Tesla, it juices demand for the stock and pushes the price up. It's only temporary and it looks like that's going to dry up here very fast. So holders, holders of those call either have to roll them or can't sell them or turn them into stock. Well, that's that's all drying up. So here's what we're looking at. If you if, um, either want to sell Tesla stock, if you own Tesla stock, this is a great opportunity because it was down at 108 and now it's back up to almost 200. This is your opportunity to sell and get out. So one, if you own the stock, you can just sell the stock. So one, sell the stock. And if that's all you do, that's okay. You can look to buy another stock or if Tesla goes down to 50 bucks a share or something, uh, you can maybe always buy it back. So we might like, you might love Tesla. You might've made a lot of money on it, but you're just gonna lose money going forward. Time to sell the stock. So one, sell Tesla. Now, if you wanna make money on the way down, you can buy a put. Now, since we don't know exactly 
when Tesla's going to drop. If we knew it was going to drop this next week or next month, we'd buy a shorter term put because they move faster. But seeing as we don't know exactly when all this is going to take place, we want to give ourselves a little time. So we want to look at the June 16, 2023 put. And you want to buy one that's kind of out of the money. So out of the money means uh, if the stock price is trading at one, 194 and you buy a 193 put, that's not really out of money. That's just like at the money. Uh, in the money put means you bought a, like a 200 put. In other words, nine, the current price is below the 200, so you're in the money. So we want to buy an out of the money put. I'm looking at the 150s. You could also buy like a 160 or 170, but the 150s can move a little more because if it drops down to 150 range, uh, you have a chance of doubling or tripling your money on this. I mean, like doubling your money or getting like a, a triple on Yeah, exactly. So you want to look at a limit price of 12 or better uh, on the 150 puts. Currently, like as I'm making this uh, video, they're actually selling around 10 and a half. So it gives you a little wiggle room if you don't buy these in the next couple of days, you don't see this for the next couple of days. Uh, you still get in, get in there. Then after you buy it, you want to turn around and just put a limit order in to sell it. So you don't want to sell it immediately. If you put a sell order to sell, let's say you buy one contract at 11, that's going to be 1100 bucks, $1,100. And then you can put an order to sell at 30, which means it would sell at $3,000, almost tripling your money. Um, so here's kind of what we're talking about. So, you know, this, I'm, I don't give... Uh, recommendations for anybody to buy or sell any particular thing uh, individually. I don't give you recommendations on your portfolio. I'm not licensed. I'm not a stockbroker anymore. I don't take your trades. I don't help you with that. I'm just here to give you some investment advice and hopefully give you some ideas of how to save money in your portfolio by saving things, selling things that are overvalued, maybe buying things that are undervalued. Like yesterday, we looked at the uh, um, natural gas and how it's had a huge sell-off and that looked like a good buying opportunity. Well, today we've had a huge run up on, on uh, Tesla. This looks like a good selling opportunity. So we want to sell it short. Um, if you like this, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can get uh, updates on future uh, videos if I post those. I don't post this often. I don't usually post back-to-back -back videos, but this just looks like a too good of an opportunity on Tesla. Normally I post like once a week, once every other week. It's tax season. I do taxes. I own a tax business. I've been a stockbroker, registered investment advisor, certified financial planner. But all I'm doing right now is taxes, and I own my tax business, and I'm like busy as I'll get out. So I'll try to post these when I get get time, or if I see something that we should sell or buy. But uh, hopefully you guys have a great day, and we have a good option to make a little money here. And um, we'll be talking to you soon.